which is the number one camera manufacturer over the last 20 consecutive years? I'm glad you asked. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we're coming to the end of a little bit of Misty Morning. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is going to be a photo day. We're gonna be talking about Canon and some of the other companies, camera manufacturers, and asking that question, who is number one for the last 20 consecutive years? Well, Canon believes they are. And in a report right out of Tokyo, they said something like, Canon announced today that the company's interchangeable lens and digital cameras, DSLRs and mirrorless cameras, maintained the number one share of the global market for the last 20 consecutive years, from 2003 to 2022. That is the global market. We're not talking about only Japan or only the US. Global market, number one share. So, I guess my question to you is, does it matter anymore? We're seeing DP review just going out of business, a lot of the camera rags where we used to go and buy magazines, those are going out of business, a lot of the camera websites, a lot of the photography channels are doing other things. Now, I think that it's a good story and I wanna know your thoughts on it, but instead of reading you the whole article, Petapixel did a pretty good job at summarizing it. So I wanna go through this with you and then I wanna get your thoughts. But before I get into it, I wanna say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, why the hell not? Go pick them up, they are 100% free. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you enjoyed this content, even the least, throw it a thumbs up, that would be helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you are subscribed click this little button over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And on Fridays, lately at least, I've been going live. So definitely join in the fun. Finally, if you just want to say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button down there. You can click that if you like. If not, that's okay too. Just consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. So anyways, let's get into this article. Once again, this is a summarization of what came out of Tokyo. Just, I believe, yesterday. It says Canon is celebrating its dominance in the interchangeable lens camera or ILC market as it says it has been the top dog for 20 consecutive years. The company says that it has maintained the number one share for the global market of ILC devices for 20 years from 2003 to 2022. The company cites that its own internal survey as a basis of the claim but it doesn't sound implausible. Canon considers ILC cameras to be both mirrorless and DSLRs, and while the latter has been slowly phased out over the last several years, Canon still sells a lot of them and has for a quite a long time. So while it took a while for Canon to catch up with Sony on the mirrorless front, it was still moving a lot of DSLR camera units. Canon cites the beginning of its ILC dominance as the launch of the EOS KISS digital camera, or also known as the original Digital Rebel, or or the EOS 300D in regions outside of Japan, which launched in September of 2003. Quote, this groundbreaking camera, which was competitively priced and featured a compact, lightweight design, became the engine for growth in the digital DSLR market, capturing the top share of the global market and heralding the age of the digital SLR market, Canon says. Quote, since that time, Canon has continued to launch a range of ground breaking products, including the professional model EOS 1D, I use that, as well as the EOS 5D series, I use those also, which paved the way for digital SLR video recording. I would say more of the latter, the 5D Mark II was that groundbreaking camera that paved the way, in my personal opinion, for DSLRs actually shooting video. There was a lot of TV, episodic TV shot on EOS 5D Mark IIs at the time, just because 
because they could and they were very cheap and they didn't cost hundreds of thousands of dollars and they produced amazing footage. Now, the article continues, Canon rode the success wave of the Rebel series for several years until mirrorless became too much of a technological breakthrough to ignore. In October 2018, Canon finally made the transition with the launch of the EOS R system. In July 2020, the EOS R5 became the first mirrorless camera to feature 8K video recording among digital interchangeable lens cameras released prior to July 8th, 2020, and followed that with the EOS R3 in November 2021. Quote, in addition, Canon launched the EOS VR system designed to record video for virtual reality content in December of 2021, Canon adds. Canon has continued to add to its mirrorless lineup since the launch of the EOS R7 and the R10 in the middle of 2022 and the R6 Mark II in December. The R50 and the R8 followed this past February. Quote, Canon will continue to refine its proprietary image technology while further strengthening and expanding the EOS series of cameras and RF and EF series lenses, opening up new avenues of image capture to meet the needs of increasingly diverse users and to promote and spread the photo and video culture the company finalizes with. So in my opinion, I think this is great. For 20 years, they remain number one when it comes to ILCs or mirrorless as well as DSLR sales. 20 years, that's from 2003 to now, 2022, now we're in 2023. 20 years is a very long time, but we did see Sony eating Canon's lunch for many years when it came to the mirrorless market. Finally, Canon got involved and now they're, I would say, pretty close on par with Sony. Nikon has done the same. Now, Nikon is a little bit lower on the totem pole, let's say, but their newest releases have been absolutely amazing. No recalls, no problems. And I would even go as far as saying that the Nikon Z9 is probably the best mirrorless camera full frame out there as of right now. That's just my opinion. I don't even shoot the thing, but I've seen a lot of comparisons and it is quite amazing, especially for video. Now we've been talking about Canon and Nikon and Sony. Well, what about like Panasonic, for example, or maybe Fuji? Fuji's been doing great. Panasonic has been doing even better. I think Panasonic is kind of that dark horse right now in the full frame mirrorless market. Why do I say that? Panasonic has always been one of the best video cameras out there. I've shot it for episodic TV and bigger documentaries. That is the Evo 1 on the Panasonic side. It is an amazing camera. There's a lot of Panasonic video cameras that are top notch. I would say better than all of the other brands out there. Now, that being said, the problem with Panasonic is they never figured out autofocus. For years and years and years, they stuck with contrast detect for so many years and said it was the best thing since sliced bread. And that's all we needed to do was make more powerful processors and contrast detect would be enough. The answer to that has always been negatory. Right? And finally, they decided, you know what? We're going to have to do this dual pixel type of thing that we see Canon and Sony doing. We need to do something that is a hybrid, that is not only contrast detect, but also phase detect, put them together, marry them up. And now we have an autofocus system that actually works. And they did it. So I think that Panasonic might be that dark horse moving forward. I do believe as Panasonic puts this autofocus system in the rest of their lineup, I think that they're going to move forward and they're going to move forward quick. Now, all this said, we know that we're talking about mirrorless and DSLRs and where things are going. And one of the questions that a lot of you guys had for me on one of my lives was, what do you think about the EOS M series? Will Canon get rid of it? Is it going to be kind of end of the road when it comes to the EOS M series? Now that we see Canon having the R50, for example, the R10 and whatnot. And the answer to that is no. And I was doing some research on it. I found that one of, I guess, the leads over there at Canon, the product division managers, he was talking about the EOS M series and someone directly asked him the question, will Canon be discontinuing the EOS M series? And what he said basically was no. And what he said was this, quote, the size of the M series enclosure is even smaller than the R50 and there is still a strong demand from our customers. 
This means that we will continue to offer the EOS M series as we need to meet this high demand. So, since you guys are asking for the Canon EOS M series, Canon will continue to make it. And I speculated this way back when. I said, you know, Canon cut their teeth with that M series. They sell a ton of them. A ton. It was the number one camera, the number one mirrorless camera sold for years and years and years and years. Everyone thought it was the Sony, and it really wasn't. It was the Canon EOS M series which was amazing to me when I found out about this. So what they're saying is, you know what? We're selling so many of these, there's no reason for us to stop, and rightfully so. Now, coming full circle here, does it really matter? Does it matter that they're number one? And I ask you guys this question because I have seen the camera industry over the last 15 years plus just dwindling, becoming less and less and less, seeing camera sales go down in half and then another half and another half. Literally every two, three years, sales are being cut in half. Why is this? Well, the number one reason is camera phones, smartphones, because people just will rather just grab their phone that they have already in their pocket and use it to take photos instead of actually schlepping around a camera. Now, is that good? Is it bad? Well, it's good because yes, you'll capture images that normally you wouldn't capture, but it's bad if you ever want to print these images or if you take the images in extremely low light, you know what they look like. And if you don't, try printing one at an eight by 10 size and then come back to me and tell me what you see. It is a big, horrific, just mess. The sensor is so damn small, it doesn't matter how many megapixels when the pixels are tiny. So it looks like crap and they do absolutely horrific in low light. Now, do the phones try to make up for this? Yeah, what do they do? When you take a picture, it'll take like 10 or 15 shots at all different f-stops, let's call it, and then combine them together, basically creating like HDR images in the camera that you don't even know about. They don't have a choice. Right? Because once again, the image sensor is so damn small. So does it even matter if Sony is number one or Canon is number one as of today? I would have to say no. I want to know from you, what do you think? In the comment area below, let's have this discussion. And if you enjoyed this video, even in the least, throw it a thumbs up, that would be awesome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, do all of those things. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.